Okay, today we're going to show you how to rebuild a gas compressor. Uh, this goes for pretty much any rotary vane compressor. You're going to need, <clears throat> uh, we use an impact wrench for speed of this so it doesn't take forever. You're going to need a 7 16 socket um, and you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket for the inside for this plate here. This filter here is very important. If you clean this filter, the veins will last longer because they lay a film down on the counter face. And that film helps them wear against their own material. If this gets dirty and the inlet filter gets dirty, then uh, it starts scratching away the, the vein material that it's laid down and they wear much quicker. So um, first thing you're gonna do, you don't have to take them off. We don't take them off when we rebuild them in the field and bring them back to the shop. We just rebuild them right there. These inlet filters here, um, you're going to want to tighten it slightly and then get it loose. If you don't, what will happen, and I'll show you, is um, a lot of times, because these are hollow, it'll snap off inside here. And if that happens, I mean, we have the, we have the parts to fix it, but um, it, uh, it makes the job a little more difficult. It's not too bad. So there's a couple videos on how to do this, but they do it on a brand new one. I'm going to show you. There's some issues you'll run into on a on a used one that actually needs to be rebuilt, and uh, it's mostly to do with the gaskets. And we'll show you a couple other tricks. We rebuilt tons of these. Um, <clears throat> okay, this one's real old. It's all rusted and everything, and I just tried to turn it on. It won't turn on. This is the gasket right here, okay? And this gasket, a lot of times, will not peel off. Uh, it'll get stuck, and we got one that is stuck. And we'll show you how to remove that and make it easier. A lot of times, sometimes you'll get reverse polarity on these things, and then they'll start sucking in moisture, or they'll suck in, uh, they'll actually suck in from the septic tank, and uh, that'll, You'll break your veins for sure doing that. This one here doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like the break. The veins will make a noise, and uh, um, it doesn't sound like something's broken inside because it is. <clears throat> so you move that plate there. This one's just uh, stop because it's stopped. On this gasket here, um, this one's kind of peeling off here, but it'll get stuck. Um, and I got one over here that is. <clears throat> there is usually an orange film, and that's right here. Do not remove that. A lot of times it'll get stuck to this face here, and it's a real pain. I mean, you'll spend 30, 40 minutes and really hate yourself for removing it. It doesn't need to be removed. It's not an essential part. If you remove it, then you have to put it back on. Now, the issue with this gasket, this one here, some of it peeled off, okay? And some of it didn't. And it'll, sometimes it'll break off and sometimes it won't. You just take a razor and you're gonna wanna, you have to shave it off of there. And you have to get all the stuff off. And eh, you've heard some videos, oh, you don't wanna do that, you might gouge the metal. You ain't gonna gouge nothing. We've never had an issue with it, we've rebuilt I don't know. <clears throat> Anyways, it'd be, I thought this would be a good one to show you on. It's not that old. <clears throat> so this piece here we'll sand down with like 1,000 grit sandpaper. And uh, that just smooths it out because it gets, it gets pretty worn. And uh, it's just a good idea to do it. So we'll just take some, this is uh, 1500. So if you're not really doing anything and just kind of sand that part down because what will actually happen is it looks like that. You know, it gets kind of old and you want it to fit on there kind of smooth. So you want to, it's not going to be rusted like this. This one reverse polarity and suck water in and ruined everything. Um, it won't look like that, but you'll want to sand it down, get it kind of smooth. 
one of the issues when they get like this is putting this plate back on and getting it to fit smoothly on there. Sometimes you'll fight it and uh, it'll fit good on the top, but it won't fit good on the bottom. This top piece removes. You don't ever have to remove that. I've never really going to, to rebuild it. Also, a lot of times the veins will get shoved in. One vein won't break. It'll grab the other vein as it, as it falls down here. So as it's spinning around, you'll have a broken vein down here. This vein falls, grabs it, and it'll shove it up in here. If that happens, you still don't have to remove this orange gasket. What you do is, there's two bolts here, and you kind of just loosen it a little bit and free it up and uh, <clears throat> get it to free spin again. So that happens sometimes. Sometimes this will crack. If that happens, you got to get a new pump. Um, but <clears throat> the unit itself, uh, generally you can rebuild them two times. I mean, they go 15, 20 years. They're an amazing unit. So that's what you got. So we got the orange gasket on there. We got this on here. What we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that's all smooth. And uh, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist on this stuff. I just want to make sure it's nice and clean. There's no gouges or anything like that. The blade didn't, you know, cut into it. So we take some silicone. This is what we do. We take some silicone and we put it on this, okay? And the reason we do that is because we don't want to fight the, uh, we don't want to fight the uh, gasket on there. Sometimes it can be a real pain. This one over here, and just a little bit, I mean, just enough to make it stick. So, so you got that on there. And <clears throat> one of the reasons you want to remove this is to get this thing back on there is a real pain. I mean, to get it to set. A lot of times you're going to have to set it up like this to get it on there. And our guys actually rebuild them like that. They set the veins and they put this on there. Okay? So, um, the, uh, the, uh, Put that on like so, okay? And then that'll stick nice on there. So that's on there. You're gonna get your veins. And all the kits, the kits are $65 at Wholesale Septic Supply, so they're they're not that expensive. And all your rotary vein compressors are, are basically the same. They're all gonna be four vein. Clearstream, they use three veins because they want a certain pressure and uh, want to be different, but the, uh, 95% of them are four vein. Kit comes with this, uh, orange, orange spacer, four veins, two inside filters, outside filters, two gaskets for the, the internal filters, and this gasket here. So you got that gasket on there, you get your veins out. Your veins go in a certain way, okay? So make sure you put them in the right way. You can see how the metal is cut at a certain angle and you want to put your vein has a ridge on it. It's, that's actually very important for wearing. So um, it's got a certain ridge on it. You're going to put the vein in there, okay, the same way that the metal is cut. So it just follows. So you put all four of those in there. No lubrication. Do not put lubrication in here when you're redoing these. It's not necessary. Don't spray it with anything. Don't do anything like that. So the bearings are sealed. Put that like in there and like such. There and they're nice. You're going to take this. You're going to put this plate on there like so. <clears throat> and even then the with the silicone you're gonna have you're gonna have this move a little bit on you. So we gotta get this plate on there just so. Okay. Alright, like I said, you're gonna want to make sure that's all sealed up. So you get your bolts. Sometimes our guys like to spray these things. Um, with some silicone because you know they've been there so long that uh, 
that they sometimes can be tough to put back in. We just start them. Put these in there. These, now this is the most important part, okay? This does not need to be wrenched down on, all right? You don't have to have this super tight. It's 105 inch pounds of torque, not foot pound, inch pound. So, um, I've done this so many times I don't really do that. I don't put a torque wrench on it, and you don't really have to put a torque wrench on it either. So you just get these in here. Make sure that's all lined up. That stupid thing's still going to fight me. Okay. And then just like a tire. One, two. We'll go over here. And before you button up the whole unit, you're going to want to run it. Now we can run it right now. It's not going to be a problem. Nothing's going to break. It's not all tight. The reason is, is it makes a certain noise and it's, it's loud. So if it's not working properly, it won't be that loud. If it is running properly, it will. So that is not loud. So it's, it's not running loud enough and uh, that's because it's not all buttoned up. So take this and if you do it too tight, What'll happen is, what'll happen is it'll bind up and you'll have to take this whole thing apart. So it's important that you now I'll turn it back on and you'll really hear it. <clears throat> and that's what you want to hear. Because if you just did it like that and you put the face back on, you're not going to get the proper pressure. The a big difference in the noise so um, <clears throat> you want to make sure it's tight I don't recommend using an impact wrench like I just did uh, unless you've done it a bunch of times what you're going to check for is so you got good vacuum you got good pressure um, nice and loud like that <clears throat> the way it was before, it just wasn't tight enough. You're, you ain't going to get good pressure. You're not going to get proper volume, and you have to take it all back apart. So it's important you test it like that, make sure it's running right. <clears throat> then we're going to take this piece here, okay, and we're going to put it back on. And this piece sometimes is a little bit of a struggle just because um, it's not too bad. It's just sometimes you have to fight it a little bit. That gasket is on there just right. Make sure the gasket is on there just right. We always like to start with the center bolt, okay? So we get that center bolt on there, get it started. Take another one. Sometimes you have to punt for this. This you don't have to worry about too much on the tightening part because it's going into that other plate. And uh, you just want to make sure everything's right and tight. That one's in there. We're pretty much home now. So. And I'm sweating so much because we're in we're in South Texas, so it's got about 80% humidity. It's about 100 degrees outside. <clears throat> All right. So then, what you do is uh, take your seven sixteenths. Make sure your gasket's on there good. It is. Same thing, just go around. It's not that important. You don't have to have it. This isn't going to make the, the 
the rubber bind, what will happen is that orange gasket is really, they had some issues about nine years ago. That orange gasket is so this here doesn't bind up against this and you don't get a bunch of friction. So, because it, it'll actually stop the rotor, so that orange spacer, it's uh, 0 .006 in uh, a thickness, uh, gives it just enough where that doesn't happen. It, it still wears on here. You still see it. it uh, you still have a wear in, on this plate here, but uh, it gives it enough space. And that's another reason you don't want to tighten it down so much. So, <clears throat> then you take your um, filters, your internal filters, and your gaskets put those on there. This one doesn't have there's already one on there. Your internal filter will actually your intake filter which is your in, okay, which is your vacuum part doesn't get too hot. So it's it's real rare that that, that actual filter housing will break. Uh, it's usually on the outlet side that breaks. So and that's due to the heat that it produces. It makes it brittle and that's when they they break inside. So you put this one on here, and this one's going to be important when you're first starting to kind of tighten it just a tad. Not you don't, you know, you just put enough on there, just a little bit, and then reverse it, and that'll stop it. Because I've put it on, I've tried with all my might to get get one off without tightening it first, and you'll snap it, or it just won't come loose. And it's amazing, you just tighten it just a tad, and then it just it's loosened up. So it's all put back together. Um, <clears throat> you have your. Uh, internal filter, your external filter that goes on top. These are very easy. <clears throat> That's how yours should be, just like that. They're very easy to clean. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to take that off in order to maintenance it. Uh, you just, what you, what, to maintenance these things, really you just pop this off, okay? You take it under a water spigot and you clean it off. Just keep rolling it till all the dust and all that comes off. Squeeze dry it and pop it back on there. That's it. That's all it takes. A lot of people don't even know this is there. You don't really want to fool with these. Um, the O-rings in here will get old, they'll get brittle, and they'll blow out eventually. But um, it's usually on this one here. And you, you can take it out, put a new one in there. What happens is that you have a... That's basically it. So you keep your filter clean, okay? This is your outlet. We'll turn it on, do all that stuff. Don't fool with anything in the back. This back here, this fan does not need to be removed. No part of the rear end needs to be touched at all. Only the front end, which is the pump part, okay? So <clears throat> we'll turn it on for you. And uh, it's gonna be just loud. They're not just loud when they're hooked up to the pump, but that's about what you got. So um, they're a little quieter than that. Sound, that's about what they sound like. So they're not too bad. They're a great pump. They last a long time. <clears throat> that's how you want them to shut off. Uh, that's all we install is rotary vanes. So we got a lot of experience with them. Uh, your kits are, like I said, they're $65 a wholesale septic supply. Some other places they got them for $80, $90, $100. But they're $65. Um, you can buy them all day long for that. That's pretty much it. If you guys have any comments or questions, ask them. I'll be happy to uh, help you. I've walked many th people through rebuilding one of these. If you take the back end of this off, you are asking for trouble. Don't fool with the back end. Definitely don't start breaking it down and opening it up inside. Uh, you'll break something and you'll need a new pump and you'll hate yourself for it. But um, You can uh, rebuild those and um, about the amount of time I did might take you a little bit longer uh, I've done a lot of them so but they're pretty easy to rebuild not too much too much to them just remember this face here on the, the back end here you don't need to wrench down on it doesn't need to be you know it's not a car tire you don't need to be that tight all right y'all have a great day